Hi, my name is Cody and I'm with LaunchDarkly. If you've been in the software game for long or worked in the infrastructure space or really any part of tech probably, it's hard to have not heard about Kubernetes by now. One of the most common questions we get is how does LaunchDarkly work in a Kubernetes world? So in this video, I want to take you on a quick talk through around how LaunchDarkly adds value to Kubernetes and how we make a Kubernetes deployment just a little bit better when you use LaunchDarkly alongside the applications that you're deploying. Let's jump in and take a look. Here we have a diagram that represents a sample application deployment in a Kubernetes world. We have this code build step where people are typically coding. They're using something like VS Code or Atom to build their application out. They push their code to a place, maybe like a GitHub or GitLab instance. And then usually a CI CD process kicks off, something that's taking that code in and spitting out the compiled application. In this case, we're creating an image to be used in Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an orchestrator for running container images, and it adds a lot of resiliency features and extensibility features to running applications in a Dockerized or a container environment. So the image is built, it kicks out, and it's deployed onto that Kubernetes cluster. Now, if it's a fresh deployment, those pods deploy, pods being the lowest level of an application in Kubernetes, uh, those pods are deployed and the application comes up. If that application already existed on the cluster, it's going to replace those pods with the new version that you built. So it's going to gradually turn off those old ones and bring online the new ones. As the app comes available, when those uh, pods become ready, you might discover the application has an issue, right? And now this is where the dragon shows up. This is where the problems exist in strictly relying on Kubernetes by itself to roll out an application. It's an all or nothing approach. When those pods come online, everyone's accessing that application and without some sort of way to limit the capabilities that are being exposed to users, they have the full force of the application. So if there's an app issue that exists, that application is now degraded for all the users in the environment. And what that leaves is an operator or an administrator going back in and having to find the working version or some sort of version. Maybe you're doing nightly builds, so you have to go back several days and find one that's working. Redeploy it out to Kubernetes, let those app pods cycle again, and then wait for it to become ready again. And all that time you're waiting and hoping that you're not being impacted by problems in your environment. Maybe a service is firing too many API requests off clogging up a database, or maybe the application's just not available at all. Not a good thing to be unavailable for that much time. So let's take a look at how LaunchDarkly makes this a little bit better. So in a Kubernetes world, LaunchDarkly adds some pretty great capabilities. Uh, right out of the gate, we're going to go in as we're building our code, as we're getting ready to push our code, we're going to create feature flags in LaunchDarkly. So we're going to take that code and we're going to break it in pieces and say, this part is gated behind a feature flag. We're also going to create targeting rules in LaunchDarkly to let us specify the users, devices, or configurations that are going to receive that feature flag when we turn it on. This lets us ensure that people are only getting specific parts of our application when we're ready to. Beyond that, the rest of the deployment stays pretty much the same. We still build our code, we still push our code, the image still gets built, we're still deploying it onto Kubernetes, it still has to run somewhere, the app pods are still cycled, and as the app becomes available, people can consume it. This is where things change a little bit though, and it's, it's for the better. We're now able to come in and we're able to toggle that feature on. So we wanna try out a specific feature, maybe a new UI component, a new login ability, new database connection. We're able to toggle that feature on and let's say that problem still exists. Now, because we've created this targeting rule and launched darkly, we're able to say that this issue is only impacting the users that are targeted. Only the users who are able to consume that feature experience that problem, which drastically reduces our blast radius and ensures that we're keeping the application safe for everybody else. What's better is we have this ability to bring in the kill switch concept that we've talked about a lot before, the ability to just toggle that feature back off again. It's disabled immediately and functionality is immediately restored. And this lets you get back into rebuilding that feature without the pressure of the application being completely down. This is how we bring in the concept of testing things in production environments because we can remove the code at any time whenever something's not working and that code is no longer evaluated. There's a lot of things that we do to make a Kubernetes deployment a lot better and create a more resilient application deployment in Kubernetes. Allowing Kubernetes to run the infrastructure side of things to bring up the running state of the application while LaunchDarkly manages the software state of the application and the features inside the application that you're running. Stay tuned for more. Looking forward to hearing your feedback and let us know how we can help. Have a great day.